uh, Bob Brennan, a VP GM of Intel Foundry Services and Customer Solutions Engineering, is a successful longtime high tech Silicon Valley executive. Prior to his role at Intel, he was Vice President uh, Emerging Memory and Systems at Micron Technology, where he focused on delivering leading edge memory solutions. As Senior Vice President at Samsung Electronics, he guided Samsung's penetration of the systems market, as well as the introduction of Systems Lab for memory flash data center systems. Bob's early experience includes over a decade at Intel driving initiatives in enterprise, mobile, multimedia, and communications infrastructure that has resulted in successful semiconductor chip offerings. Bob's topic this afternoon is risk five in a new system foundry era. Bob will explain Intel's commitment to the open source risk five ecosystem and describe the opportunities for growth in applications including auto, IOT, IA, I AI, Edge, Cloud, and others. Please welcome Bob Brennan, Vice President, Intel Foundry Services, right here. Thank you. Wow, what a great introduction. <laughs> you know, that was a fantastic introduction. You know, you need a career in radio because you really have a wonderful voice, sir. It's just amazing. I, I, I aspire to have such a voice. Anyway, we're really pleased to be here, really pleased to support Andy's in their conference today. and. Uh, we're just super pleased. So let's get the slide deck started here, if we could. So today we're going to talk about Risk Five and a new system foundry era. Legal stuff, of course. We're going to talk about IFS as a system foundry. We're going to talk about Risk Five software, and we're going to talk about Risk Five commercial case studies. So IFS as a system foundry. Pat Gelsinger announced System Foundry at Hot Chips. He followed on to discuss it in innovation. I will do my best to repeat his points here. Number one, System Foundry starts with wafer technology, world's best wafer technology available from Intel to our customers. Number two is packaging, world-class packaging technology, which has previously been closed in the Intel ecosystem and is now open for our customers. Number three is software, tying this software and a multi-ISA software, heterogeneous software, to our silicon. Fourth, and not last, is chiplets. Chiplets is a combination of packaging technology, open interconnect technology, and open protocol technology uh, to bring chips together. Wafers, packaging, software, chiplets. So this triangle represents Open System Foundry. On the bottom of Open System Foundry is our world-class foundry offering. Intel 16, Intel 3, Intel 18A technologies. Next, we have our IP Alliance. And of note, you will see Andes is noted as a member of our IP Alliance, which means we collaborate closely together. Above that, you will see packaging, IP, and interconnect technology. Above that, you will see UCI Express, EMIB, and FOBRES technology. EMIB is a Two and a half D technology prevalent in data center applications, and Fovros is a 3D technology uh, prevalent in client and other 3D markets. Above that, we have software and services supporting our multi ISA strategy. Our multi ISA strategy is comprised of x86, ARM, and of course, we're here today talking about Risk V. Last and not least, we have One API, and One API is a software fr framework that ties together x86 as a computational element and accelerators, uh, which are increasingly becoming based on RISC-V. That's Open System Foundry. So starting with a wafer foundry, Intel 16 is a mature technology. It's available today. Intel 3 is a FinFET technology. It's available for production in next year. And Intel 18A introduces gate all around. It's a revolutionary technology. And that's available the year after that and the second half of 24. Multi-ISA support. Uh, it's probably not a surprise to people in this room, but we are Intel and we still think x86 has a long way to go. <laughs> and we also think that x86 has a, the broadest software ecosystem currently. Uh, of course, being a foundry, we do support ARM and ARM architectures. 
And here, we're today we're talking about risk five. Uh, we believe we're gonna talk uh, shortly here about the software ecosystem, which is emerging and growing and maturing. And in that uh, domain, we have um, partnership in Risk Five International. We're working with the Risk Five International Board of Directors, Marcus here, and we're also working on the technical steering committee on a, a bunch of technical issues we're going to talk about in a minute. And of course, our partners here is uh, Sci Five, Esperanto, uh, Ventana, and Andes. And again, very pleased when Frankie invited me to come talk at this event. So thank you for being here. Okay. In terms of our Risk Five strategy. We have the four partners I mentioned briefly a second ago. We recently demonstrated a Sci-5 P550 uh, based on an Intel Foundry process, and we demonstrated that running in innovation. Uh, we had um, uh, Ubuntu, we had media, we had games. It's pretty cool. And the intention of doing this with, uh, with uh, Sci-5 is to start uh, helping to develop and proliferate the growth of the RISC-V software ecosystem. And of course, uh, Ventana for high performance scores and um, Andes, although given the performance that was just shown on stage here earlier, uh, you can see clearly they're moving out of the embedded core space into automotive and other applications such as vector processing. So naturally, since we're at an Andes conference, we'd like to have Open System Foundry with Andes together as Open Risk Five technology, and together we'd like to grow our business. So I want to talk a little bit about the RISC-V software ecosystem. And um, I'll have, um, right after this slide, I'll have Mark come up and talk about this. So first of all, I want to talk about RISC-V International and SOC architecture. In the SOC architecture, so RISC-V, in order to propagate, has to have more than just an ISA. Okay, an ISA is necessary, not sufficient. We have to solve problems of security and manageability. We have to solve problems of confidential compute. We have to have a clean virtualization solution. We have to uh, protect the data, reliability, availability, serviceability, and we have to figure out how to do performance monitoring. All of this has to be clean, all this has to be standardized, and all this has to have multi-vendor support. And that's what we're working on in RISC-V International through a series of working groups. The combination of open hardware and open software creates a spiral together of the consistency in the hardware, the consistency in the software, that grows the application ecosystem, and that leads to business growth worldwide. Now, regarding open software, we have applications, operating system, virtualization, BIOS, firmware, and on the very bottom, tools and compilers. So regarding the software stack that we're working on RISC-V International, I'm gonna have Mark come up here very briefly and describe his software ecosystem that he drew this slide, so I thought he was here and he could tell us about it. Yeah, we were, we were waiting before the conference and, and Bob shows me the slide and goes, yeah, I said, yeah, I did that at 3 a.m. in the morning one night. Uh, so uh, th this is, uh, and it's intended to try to get everything onto one slide. It is not complete. Uh, we ran out of room for some icons on some of the rows, uh, but it, you can see that it's growing all the time. The idea is that RISC-V actually does the ISA, uh, the formal model with SAIL. It's a technology out of Cambridge to specify ISAs. And uh, the basic compatibility architecture tests, these are not compliance tests, these are basic compatibility. On top is a, a very familiar stack to you. It's all the pieces you need in order to deploy products to your customers. Uh, on the left, uh, you'll see, well, yeah. On the left, you'll see uh, you know, compilers and tools and so on and so forth. On the right, you see attributes. Uh, and underneath, you see the parts that are actually done uh, by members. Sometimes those are uh, open source members, like um, Chips Alliance or, or Low Risk. Sometimes they're proprietary or commercial. Um, and then the stuff around the side in the white, those are things people sell. Uh, so uh, this was an attempt to try to get everything onto one slide. Does that do it for you? That's one, and Mark, impromptu, I'd like to do a high five for Risk Five. Ready? Uh, Are you ready? ready? All right. Everybody join <laughs> us at Summit. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. I really appreciate it. <laughs> that was completely impromptu, but it's his slide, and he says it's much better than I do, so thank you, Mark. Okay. 
Now, I also wanted to compliment, since we're here talking about Andes today, I was very impressed uh, at the re recent AI conference at the Andes software stack that they uh, presented, right? It supports the common frameworks such as TensorFlow and uh, PyTorch as an example. And I was really impressed how their AI frameworks uh, connect directly down to the neural network model and how that's all supported by the LLVM compiler because LLVM is a very common compiler, obviously, for uh, the ecosystem and how that seamlessly maps onto their hardware and how they have extensibility in this software framework uh, to move from where they are today to move to the new uh, processors that they announced just before this uh, presentation. So I just want to compliment this software stack and say it's very well done. Now, Intel, we see multi-ISA as being a programming challenge. Naturally, we think x86 is here to stay and it's gonna continue uh, to be prevalent in many applications, data center, clients, you name it. It's also true that there's emerging flavors of computation. Uh, one example that was shown earlier is uh, vector processing. Another is matrix multiply. So if you look at um, any kind of AI or inference, it's basically a large set of matrix multipliers and the matrix multipliers in turn are fed by large SRAM buffers and caches. So we see that customers, what they wanna do is they want to take and write their code once and run it anywhere. And then as the Moore's law continues, as System Foundry continues to produce competitive silicon that improves every year in terms of the power performance area and cost, we'd like for the customers to not have to rewrite their software. So that's where Intel came up with the concept of one API, which is meant to enable our customers to uh, write their software and deploy it in heterogeneous environments and have their software investment preserved. So if you look at one API, it's a middleware framework uh, that sits above CPUs, GPUs, FPGAs, and accelerators. Now these accelerators, for example, could be a vector processing accelerator. Uh, we just saw 512-bit, 1024-bit accelerators. At Innovation, we actually, with Codacip, did a demo of an x86 core processor working with a RISC-V vector processor, and those two working seamlessly together. We believe this is the future, that to the software developer, it has to be seamless, and RISC-V has to be part of that seamless software story. So this is an example of a software stack. I also admit I stole part of this from RISC-V International. Thank you, Mark. And you see the traditional software stack top to bottom. It goes from everything from applications through layers of virtualization, containerization, all the way down to boot, LLVM, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so on right, I've represented that as sort of your basic software stack. One API comes in as a middleware layer connecting CPUs, FPGAs, vector processing, AI acceleration, et cetera. And increasingly, we see RISC-V at the center of acceleration architectures of the future. And we think one API is a way to pull that together. Okay, here's a few commercial case studies. Disclaimer, I've abstracted these case studies. They don't represent any real customer, but these are trends I see happening right now in the industry. So first of all, let's look at mobile. Intel has been in the mobile market a very long time. And you see today that all the communication chips, if we look at Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 7, uh, if we look at uh, network connectivity, if we look at any of the uh, peripheries, um, if we look at the lid controller, et cetera, et cetera, increasingly these, these designs are becoming based on RISC-V in many cases. And I also noticed, I don't know if you guys saw the press announcement, but there was actually a Lenovo-based laptop based on RISC-V that was announced, uh, I think it was three or four weeks ago, something like this. I thought that was very, very interesting because Lenovo, Lenovo is obviously a mainstream uh, OEM and their embracing of RISC-V, I thought was quite interesting. So watch this space. I think there's a lot more exciting innovation to come here. Okay. In the client chassis use case, oh, by the way, I wanna say a little bit more about mobile. In mobile, there's the application processor space and there's the peripheral space. And I see the peripheral space getting picked up by RISC-V whereas the application processor tends today to be dominated by ARM. We'll see how that goes in the future. OK, 
Okay, in the client chassis use case, um, and this is where I mentioned the uh, recent announcement, it's, it's very interesting that in most laptop platforms, you'll see up to 30 embedded controllers. And I see those embedded controllers increasingly looking at ARM architecture, especially when we look at China and Asia markets. Lastly, I wanna talk about some data center use cases. Data center has become the true DSA, domain specific architecture. In the data center, what we see happening is there is a DPU, data processing unit. Of course, Intel calls it the IPU, um, different terminology, same concept. The fundamental observation you have in DPUs is that networking and storage are doing the same thing. They're wrapping and unwrapping data and they're delivering that data to the host. And we're finding that um, DPUs are becoming a real element in the balance of the data center platform. And increasingly, people are looking at RISC-V and DPUs. Now, previously I mentioned AI, and there's many different architectures for AI, but fundamentally, they're based on data moving in and out, and they have a multiply accumulate at the center. And I believe we saw a recent announcement at the AI conference that one of the major cloud service providers had taken a RISC-V vector processor and built that into their next generation machine learning uh, uh, processor. And so you guys can search the press for uh, AI conference and uh, RISC-V vector processor built into machine learning natively in the software application stack. Okay, next we look at data center CPUs. And in some cases for throughput oriented workloads, um, the power performance efficiency of smaller cores has become attractive. Naturally, we think x86 is going to uh, continue to be very attractive to data center customers, but we see emerging use cases of throughput oriented workloads of where RISC-V might be suitable. Last and not least, all over the world, video is it, whether you're on YouTube or TikTok, you name it. And we're finding that there's a new class of video acceleration processors emerging. Every cloud service provider has their own VPU and they don't call them all VPUs. But the VPU is also amenable to having RISC-V as sort of a control plane processor versus the media, which is sort of the data plane. So control plane, data plane, kind of an architecture. So kind of in wrapping this up, you know, I'm pleased to be here. I'm pleased to be here representing IFS as a system foundry. Again, we have a bottom to top solution, starts with waveform packaging, goes all the way up to software. I'm pleased that we are working with the community on the RISC-V open source software to go with the open architecture. I think there's many interesting and emerging RISC-V commercial use cases, which we would of course like to capture on Intel Foundry services. And I'd like for us together in this room to grow our business together. We'd like to grow our way for business and partner with everybody in this room to grow your business together. Thank you.